want to put anybody who is always there in your very next breath can be your deliverance, can be your victory. But it's up to you to climb. You know, Jesus is not always going to just reach out and save this one, save that one. It's the ones who came to him that had those, that deliverance. And when we're talking about saying yes to God, you may have a testimony that's 10 years old. You may, have, you may not have one that's 5 minutes old. But at the same time, if you feel that you can't see the wood through the trees, as they say, you, you feel that you're in a position where it's been a while since I've cried out, it doesn't matter. God has been there all along. Amen. So he's saying, the moment you call out, Lord, save me. Yes. Whether I have a testimony 10 years ago or not, whether I have a testimony 5 minutes ago or not, I am crying out now. The yes is a very present word. Yes is a very current current um, response to something. You know, when, if someone asks you a question, you don't say, okay, ask me in five minutes. It doesn't matter. When you ask them, it's that moment that you reply that matters. That moment that you say, the yes becomes your now. So will you let him help you? Will you let him save you? Will you let him give you that testimony of now? Or are you going to maybe wallow for a while? Are you going to wallow hoping that the time will come sometime in the future where you're going to say yes? But now is given. Now has come salvation and strength. Now is the time when if you cry out to him, he will simply save you. He says here, he saw, he was afraid, but he cried, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. Right there to catch you. You know, we do these, we've seen these trust exercises where you yeah. lean back and you wait for someone to catch you. Yeah. Right? You're hoping, part of you is thinking, there's a tiny chance they might not catch me. What we're talking about, the one who never lets you fall. Yeah. The one who you don't have to question, is going to catch you. Your eyes can be shut open, you could be looking at something else, but as soon as you're falling, but if you're saying, Lord, save me, there's your neck right there. And he doesn't just want to leave you at a position of hovering, being kept, you're now standing on your own two feet. Amen. Once you've been caught, you stand. And you stand firm on his word. And just one more, a uh, few more verses before I take my seat. From James chapter 1, verses 5 to 8. It says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Is that doing word again? Ask it. You have to do the work. Speak. That giveth to all men liberally. Why does God give liberally? He loves us all. And upbraideth, upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed out of control. For let not that man think he shall receive anything. If you're not going to mean it, now it's not to scare you, it's just saying, be honest. We had earlier on, we were talking about honesty. If you want God to help you and you genuinely want God to help you and you say, Lord, help me, he will help you. But he knows. He knows if your mouth is just moving and the word yes is coming out or if you're just saying, save me because you look to your, at the corner of your eye and you can see one minister or that minister looking at you and you think, oh, maybe I better move my mouth and say something. It's not about that because there's going to come that time where you're standing on your own and you actually wish that there was someone to pray for you, but there's no one, not because they don't love you, but it's because they can't be there, they're human. We can't, we are not omnipresent. We can't be there for, we can promise to be there, we can try to say that we're going to be there for each other, but there will be a time where we cannot be there for each other. That's why we must have the Saviour with us all the time. Right. 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 Dare not walk alone. Right. So right to say that. Because we don't know that time when we're going to stand there and we have to make the decision like Brother Prince gave his testimony this morning. No one's around. So you now, that's where your testimony is born. Because it's just you and God. Just you. And when I was, when I was away at uni and, and you know, I have a phone call here and there the first few weeks, first few months, after a while, no more calls. I might not go to church, no one saying anything to me. I don't have anyone asking me if I've been to church for the past six months. I'm the one accounting to myself, have I been? But this is when I, my knees find the floor. And when I find my God, that's when that's the time. When I'm on my own, oh, you this is the kind of a comfort zone here where there's lots of people around. Someone else is gonna hold up my hand if it gets tired, someone's gonna wipe my face if they're covered in tears, that's fine. But when you're by yourself, but this is a beauty. He that dwelleth in the secret place.
you know, it's almost like how, um, how voting works. It's a personal thing. The yes that you say, I can't say yes to you. I can want it for you. I can wish it and pray it and hope it for you. But it's you who has to say those words. It could be my earnest desire that you say yes, but you yourself have to say yes. Because at the end of it, you know, if all of us got wiped out tomorrow and you were standing, then what? You know, when these things happen, when, when people might say, oh, don't go to church today, don't pray today, don't fast today, then you kind of say to yourself, okay, then what? So you miss this, you miss that, you don't do this and you don't do that, and then what? Where are we going with this? Oh, the scripture says, just one last quote, there's so many verses, but two paths are before us. And it's a simple encouragement, choose life. Amen. Don't complicate it, choose life. Choose life, life. amen. All the other things are going to fall away. Yes. Yeah, yes, life has challenges and yes, things are difficult. I have been to things, I'm not going to go into that right now, the can of words. But thank God. <laughs> but I will say simply choose life. Oh, God bless you.
every heart. The Spirit is speaking in this place, believe it or not. The Spirit is speaking. Who will be the first? Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Apostle. Hallelujah. <laughs> many years ago, I was invited to a service. It was an ordinary service. Nothing special. It would be a brand like that. And this is just a special service. It was one of the greatest things others to a legion. I had no idea what I was saying yes to. I said yes to the invitation because I was with a group of others who we felt there's no crime being committed in going to the church. I'd never been anywhere near church since I got to this country. Having lived here for a few years by then, I'd never been to a church. Though as a child I was brought to Sunday school. But that one yes has made all that has happened since possible. Sometimes we say yes in a very small way, and that's all right because you know God doesn't always speak from the clouds like how he spoke to Paul. But the significance is the same. Abraham went to God by a dream. Saul of Tarsus went to God by a personal pronouncement from God. Saul, Saul, you have to follow me. It's hard for you to kick against a prince. And that made a huge difference to his life and to our life. Yes. That one, yes, yes, look what good has come from it. Amen. And when you say yes, you never know what great things God can do through you. It's been now 2,000 years since Paul said yes, but we're still giving God the glory for Paul. If you want to live long in the memories of people, it's not in, it's not, praise God, in the football. It's not in the cricket. It's not in many things because when you're dead, they forget you. That's right. Amen. But if any one of you tonight was singing the choir were to suddenly drop down in the next six months and die, we would turn up, we would cry, we would feel so sorrowful. But I tell you this, if your amen, your head teacher heard you die, they wouldn't come along. Because that's not about what they do. Saying yes to God is the greatest thing we can ever do. It may just be by a dream, it might be by revelation, but the outcome is the same. And because of that simple yes to that church invitation, I've never said no since, some 30 odd years later. Why? Because I find no fault in him. Praise be to God. I find no fault in him. Praise be to God. Let me say it again. I find no fault. We find no fault in our Jesus. We find no fault in our Jesus. We now have seven minutes. If no one's going to stand, I'm going to call upon someone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
my desire every day that I wake is to be closer Amen. to my Jesus. Amen. Pray for me because heaven is going to be my home. Yeah. I don't need to ask anyone. I know it. Declare it's going to be my That's home. All right.
something anything for worship. Pastor up, pastor up, pastor up, pastor up. Because I believe that these men 
man got a revelation. You understand? Because I, I believe when we're walking in that, that level of the spirit, that we do not allow the circumstances to dictate what we do. Hallelujah. And we do not allow, watch this, we do not allow such a uh, situation to dictate what we will not do. See, the reason why everyone was around the building is that they didn't want to go on the roof. And nobody in their right mind is going to go on somebody else's roof and take it up. But when you have an anointing, when you have a revelation, hallelujah, when your eyes have been opened, hallelujah, God puts a desire, come on somebody, hallelujah, he puts such a burden on you, hallelujah, that one way or another, this man that's in this bed is going to meet Jesus.
especially if this is your first time here. A very special welcome to you in the name of the Lord. We love you and love to have you with us. But Jesus loves you even more. I want to be more with you. Praise the name of the Lord. As a, a pastor said, a little bit one thing. I want you to observe. Now was all this. I didn't know why I was going. I didn't know exactly what was going to come of it. But the one thing the Lord said to me, I want you to observe. And so I went into the conference with the desire to observe. As a matter of fact, I said, yeah, Lord. Yeah. Some simple things we need to say yes to. Then we can say yes to some big things. Because some simple things God say, we don't say yes to it. So when the big things come, we actually miss them. Amen? Because we're not prepared to say yes. But I went in there with the attitude just to observe and see what God is doing. Amen? And I don't know, if you are a praying person and you're praying for revival, I don't know about you, but if God calls you, one of the things you have to pray for is the revival of His people. Amen? Revival. Continuous revival. Revival don't have to be something that happened and then pass on God. Amen? We can continually be revived or in revival. Amen? Revival can be a continuation. And if we can think that way, it will happen. And so, I began to observe. And one of the first things I observed was the people's attitude before God. Amen? And I keep sharing this. I said, in the West, and I said that when I stood up there that day, because I was amazed at what I saw. In the poor countries, or where we think people don't know God, don't underestimate. People know God. I know how to connect with God. Amen? Especially when it's only God they know. They don't know money. And they don't know fever, they don't know education, and they don't know me. They know God. Amen? And because they know God, many of what God has come to them. And so, I began to observe. And as I observed, the one thing I saw that these people didn't come here expecting the choir to sing and stir them up. Nor did they come expecting the preacher to preach and stir them up. Amen? They didn't come expecting to hear the band music uh, do it. These people came to engage with God for themselves. Amen? They came to connect with the Lord. Amen? I don't know if anybody today, when they're leaving home, said to the Lord, I want to meet with you today. Amen. I expect some from you today. I expect a revival in my soul today. All these things were being revealed in my spirit, how these people came. They came expecting God to be there. They came expecting to connect with God. They came expecting the opportunity to worship. Amen. And as they worship, the Spirit of God came. And things were done in the meeting. Not by the preachers. Nobody did not have to run around lay hand on anybody. But I tell you, there was mighty healings by God Himself. Mighty outpouring. Mighty deliverance. Amen. Because the people's heart was set on God. When the time for worship came, you didn't have to ask anybody to worship. I heard nobody stand and said, let us praise the Lord. Nobody did that. Oh, half a million to start with. And by the time the conference ended, a million people were there. And I have some videos to prove it. And in this conference, as thick as the crowd were, they find a spot to dance before the Lord. They find a place to raise their hands, lift their voice, cry to God, stretch out to God. And as they stretch out to God, God came in the midst and begin to work. You literally witness with your own eyes when God came in the crowd and began to move. 
began to work. And as God worked, they praised. Amen. As God touched, they worshiped. Hallelujah. Almost kind of not. As a, as a matter of fact, there was at one stage, nobody could stop what was going on. Amen. Because God, we talk about God taking over. God took over. And they were willing to go with God. What I'm saying is, you can come in these meetings and get anything you desire from God if we come with the right attitude and we put the right action behind the right attitude. And I am saying, I said to my young people a couple of Sunday mornings ago, you can come in church and you can choose to sit in the meeting and be bored. Did you hear what I said? You can choose to sit in the meeting and be bored. You can come in this wonderful meeting and be bored if you choose to do so. Amen? But you can also choose to come in this meeting and say, God is in this place. And I know it. And I'm going to get something from God. My soul is empty. My storehouse is empty. I'm not where I should be. I want more than what I now have. And you can choose. I'm going to do what it takes. And begin to connect. Worship. Worship. Call on him. Shout his name. Bless his name. Listen to me. Worship don't have any prescribed. You do this first and you do that. Right. Amen. Am I right, sir? Look here. If you don't know good words or any words, just start shout Jesus.
us with. Amen. Hallelujah. And out of that which he has blessed us with, we are going to bless his world. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's stand on our feet. Remember when you come to the house of God, you have two hands, you have two feet, and you have a mouth. Hallelujah. And some of God is expecting you to use those hands. Amen. Use those feet. Open those mouths. Hallelujah. And let his praise, his glory, and his honor flow forth. Father, we thank you for your people tonight. We are gathered before you in your presence. And we are looking to you. We are waiting on you. We are expecting from you. We want you to come, Jesus. In a way that we have not seen you. Hallelujah. Oh, because you're a God that is full of promises. You're full of surprises. And you still have the ability to surprise us. And Father, we pray do something tonight in the heart of someone. While we pray, we give you thanks for the jobs you've given. We give you thanks for the finances you've, uh, hallelujah, given to us, you've opened to us. And now, Lord, we come in the first night uh, of this youth convocation, and we want to worship you without giving. We want to worship you as them of old, who give, uh, hallelujah, knowing that you're looking. And you who's looking, you're able to give to us more than we are able to ask or think. Lord, Lord, bless your people tonight as they bless your work. Hallelujah. Bless their finances. Bless their pockets. Let there be no holes left. Oh, blessed God. Hallelujah. Don't blow on it, Lord, because you see the hearts that are willing to give to you. But rather, Lord, increase them in every way. Lord, I pray for a financial breakthrough for someone in this meeting tonight uh, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. As we give worshipfully in Jesus' name. We thank you. Amen. Your UK taxpayer and our ushers have never lost. We'll be able to claim gift day from your offering, so please go ahead and tick the box to say that you can claim gift day from your giving if you're a UK taxpayer. Always. <laughs>
Because we know that the Lord is coming soon. And we're not practicing church, we're not playing church, we're part of the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're here because we mean business for Jesus. And when we were lost in sin, God rested and delivered. I just want to say, young people, stay with God. Amen. I am telling you that you may research sin and you may read it on the internet and you may enjoy the highlights of it. But I want to tell you the devil is older than all of you put together. Right. And the thief cometh not much for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And you may feel like you're street wise. Come on. And you may feel because the ghetto is down the road from you. You may feel equipped for sin. But I don't know one backslider that is having a good time. And we don't want to underestimate the activities of the wicked one to steal your birthright and to, you know, distract you from making heaven your own. As long as I have some time when I'm working with people, I'm amazed that people could be just wicked in a nice suit. Nice smile. So forth, but just wicked. So you young folk don't think you can handle sin and handle the devil. You, you stay in the shelter of God. Amen. Is that all right? Amen. The salvation you have received, God is able to keep you from falling. And he can present you far less. Amen. For the prince of his glory with joy. And we have to look at the end of our journey, young people. That God has occasion for us to be overcome. I just want to turn... Amen. The, to Acts chapter 19. And I want to thank God for um, some of the encouragement that I've heard here tonight. Um, this word has been blessing me for a few weeks. And um, then when I come, I was wondering, you know, Lord, but I, I've heard some things just to stick with the vision that God gives you. He would do the rest. Amen. God is moving by His Spirit. He's moving in all the And there are signs and wonders when God. 
Acts chapter 19 from verse 1, amen, to verse 7. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be an Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, You know, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them. And they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. Amen. Yes, Amen. There's a thought in my heart was a good um, business place. And he got there. Amen. And going into that busy place, he came across some disciples. These were not necessarily, um, you know, the city could be full of sinners. But God had a remnant there. God had some elect there. God had some people there to be ministered to. And people who had a knowledge of God that took them to a certain place. But there was more. Amen. When he saw them, he recognized that they were God's children. Because they are called disciples. And sometimes in our journey, we come across with people that sometimes they don't look like you and they don't speak the same language, may not have the same customs as you, but there is something about them that you feel these people belong to Jesus. Sometimes folk are disillusioned with the church system. So they don't even go to church anymore. But they still belong to Jesus. We met a family in Canada and they are tired of the church system. So they meet in their basement where it's safe. Where God can move without interruption. And such is our world today. That people are And he said to them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Now I was thinking, you know, for some of us, how long have we been believing on Jesus? How long have we been a believer? In our own lives, according to our own knowledge, we believe, I believe. But he said, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? It's a strange question, but a very relevant question, because no doubt when Paul was watching, listening, observing, sharing with his folk, he think, but you might look the past, but something is missing. Yes, you might have to see you, but something is missing. Yes. Amen. Sometimes people are prepped and very dutiful and very committed. But something is missing. Amen. And in all of their activities, Pastor, have you received the Holy Ghost? Amen. I want to tell you tonight, when the Holy Ghost is in the life of a believer, your life is different than without. The Holy Spirit is necessary for the believer. Amen. Amen. To overcome and to function in this world. Amen. He 
the Holy Spirit. Since you believe. And sometimes we are not even listening to the word because I remember that I grew up in church and when I gave my heart to the Lord at the age of 16, in a Bible study, these people said, we haven't even heard that there be any Holy Ghost. So they seem to be lacking key information. And some of our folks are lacking key information. Key power is missing. Key anointing. Key life of Jesus is missing. But sometimes we're just happily going on because I'm a disciple. They're active and busy and punctual and early and leading and dry and empty. But the preacher was a nice message. Have you received them? Must be something is missing, brother. Sometimes in our personal struggle, it's not that God can't deliver us. It's not that there's not a word for us. But the Holy Ghost is missing. People find fault with, with church. And the church is only really people that God saved. But God is the head of the church, isn't it? So did God get it wrong? That's true. People will tell you why they're not filled and why they're not progressing. It's this one, it's that one. It was it. But what is it? Something is missing. Have you received it? Now, our belief system tells us many things in church. I remember as a believer, two ministers told me that they have never spoken in tongues before. And they told me as a young brother that they don't think that type of stuff is necessary. So I said, well, you sit through and let me have my brethren. Because this which is biblical, this which the prophets spoke out, happened to me. And if you don't believe in it, this important bit of information. Your salvation is going to be different. Sometimes very hard and very laborious. Like you're under the law. That's true. Heavy, heavy, heavy. But I thank God for the Holy Spirit. I love the attitude of these men. They said, you know, we, we haven't even heard. And sometimes we're not honest. we Deficiencies in our Christian life. You know, we can blame it on the internet, but somebody turned it on, isn't it? You blame it on the TV, but who turned it on? Then you say your children are busy with activities, but you put them in the class. Yeah? You talk about baby, you say that you pay for it as a parent. So you send them up to fail, and you say, you know, something is missing. But these people that are honest, that they have not understood, and I, in a Bible study I asked once, I said, is there a difference between the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the Lord? Because I hear these terms in church, but I never really understood, and I was told it is the same description of the Spirit of God, it is God, God's nature, God's Spirit our boy. And I... Grew up in church, so technically I should have known that. But I did not know that. So I was thinking, many folk in church probably don't know what they're in either. That's true. Amen? Amen. The necessity of the Holy Spirit Amen. in the life of the believer and the church to function is the life, is the breath yes. in the body. It's the intellect, it's the intelligence, it's the wisdom of the church to function. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why we don't like when people come to church and show off. Because we can tell you that good word, we can tell when you're showing off or when the Holy Spirit and what you did is on the words. It's more than the talent, it's more than the membership, it's more than the duties. We need to receive the Holy Spirit. We need to be filled. Do you understand that? We need to be full of 
theologically interfere. But the Holy Ghost is right here. Jesus told them in Acts chapter 1 that you shall receive power. You see, we've got to know what promises God has given to us. He says, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you are going to be my witnesses. And we have a lot of evangelizing folk today without the Holy Spirit. And they know it. And the thing is, these preachers that the youth that told me that I the Holy Ghost, I knew it. And sometimes I was trying to say amen, but I knew they were dry and empty. Then they said to me, like I had it wrong, like the Bible is wrong. But I thank God for the witness. When you get over to Acts chapter 10, we meet just in case you think it's come from the Caribbean. Because they say black folk, we love to, you know, we love to, you know, extra, I mean, extrovert. But brother, Italian man's man, Cornelius. Yes, and his household. Yes, when they were listening to the word. Yes, While the preacher was preaching, yes, the Holy Ghost yes, came yes, upon him. Yes, Don't try to shut down the preacher. God come to do something. Faith come by hearing. And hearing the word of the Lord. I was in a youth meeting years ago when children like this were sitting down. And the preacher preaching. And these young people begin to lift up out their seat and it's a Holy Ghost power. Children listening to preaching, getting still with the Holy Ghost in their seats. What a God. It doesn't change. It has not stopped. Have you received since you believe? The belief system in many tell them it is not necessary for me. But I love these guys after they were baptized. I love that they were obedient because sometimes people come to church and give the church problem because you want to function and you know you're not right with God. The scripture tells you not right. The anointing is not with you. You're not right. Amen. Put the pressure on people to, to do what you're doing. Who are you? Amen. When they recognize that, they said, you know, we're going to get right with God. Amen. They submit themselves. A stranger comes to town and tells you you don't have it right. And you're going on a long time. Will you receive that word? Or will you stone them? And shut them down. Hallelujah. And while, you know, I love Paul. Paul was moved by the Spirit. And after they were baptized, he laid hands on them. Amen. Amen. Paul laid hands on them. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, what happened? The Holy Ghost came on them. Young people, when lost, did the Holy Ghost come on you? Amen. When lost, did the Holy Ghost come on you? And sometimes we don't even go for prayer. We don't even make it to the prayer line. We know that the word was right and nobody did a deliverance. But after the word. Holy Ghost came. You see, in the book of Acts, in chapter 2, it says that they were all together in one place and in one accord. They were together because God told them to, to, to wait. 
And some folk are not waiting. Manifesting but not waiting. Teaching and leading but not waiting. Doing your stuff but not waiting. But they're waiting for the promise. And suddenly, God came into that upper room. There was a sound from heaven. Can you hear the sound tonight? There was a sound as of a mighty rushing wind. There was a wind that occupied the upper room. Didn't just fill the room, but fill the people who were waiting. It says there were appeared on the night. What? Fire. Mighty God. When last time you felt the fire of God resting on you. Come on. And they were all filled. It wasn't that they had the one. It wasn't the deeper one. It wasn't, the, it wasn't this one. They were all filled. Come on, church. And they began to do what? New languages and new tongue as a spirit. You mean God gave them another language to speak and they begin to prophesy. Now, why don't you have to why read is this read is it necessary? Don't we have all men who have heard this and they said, Is this our language? <coughs> We can hear God speaking through men that don't speak our language. Magnifying and the wonderful works of God. And what we're trying to say, is it necessary? Should this happen? Come on. The devout men recognize a higher, deeper move of God was in place. You see, if God wanted us to be Anglican, He would not have gone to Calvary. You understand me? He would not have poured out his life for us to be handicapped. And Presbyterian and Arabia. Come on, I don't want you to be a Hindu, but I don't want you to be a Muslim. He is the only wise God that was Savior. And we should worship him. No other God has poured out his spirit. This is the God that we serve. And they were filled. And they were told to listen the promises unto you. And unto your who? Any children here today? Any any, any hearers of promise here today? It's to the children and to them that are. And they must have fired off. Even in 2014, the promise is still for us. Anointed hands. 
and God did the rest. And you can imagine the joy in Cornelius' house. When shooting of beats, get this is a one song. Because they never believe that these type of folk should get what the apostles got. And some of us have a type of prejudice in our hearts today. And so the Holy Ghost is for some folk and not for all. And it's for some women and not for some men. And it's for some men and not for some women. But God shall be pull up our spirit. Your sons and your daughters. And your daughters in here today. And your daughters in here today. Your sons and your daughters. Shall prophesy. When Paul laid his hands on these folk, the Holy Ghost came on them. They spake with tongues just like Pentecost. You see, sometimes they think that people think that it's people teaching you what to say. But they weren't at Pentecost, but the same power manifest the same way. Their lives were never going to be the same. They not just spoke in tongues, but they prophesied. Yes. Amen. When last have you spoken forth the things of God? Research is good. And no taking is good. But have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? About our belief, Jesus said, He that believeth on me. As the Sometimes people can get offended in the church when you tell them to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I remember a brother put his hand in my face as a youth and told me, I think I'm a big man. That's what they do to you when they want to bully you, to shut down. But God give it. Some say, don't want to cut it, don't want to treat it. You can't stop what God is doing. Cornelius needed no one as approval. Heaven approved. Yeah. My son and my daughter shall prophesy. What a happy church when the saints are prophesying. Not just BBMing and texting and Skyping and, 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 and going down. But when the young people begin to prophesy. Yeah. Take courage, my brother. Take courage, my sister. Be strong. What a happy church. What a happy Christian life when we meet to prophesy. Preach it, sister. Preach it, brother. Prophesy. What a happy time. The devil tried to get me, but preach, sister. Preach, sister. God blocked it. You almost fell down. You almost went back. You went back. But God bring it back. Preach it, my brother. They prophesied. And I want to thank God for the intelligence and the wisdom and the know-how of the Spirit of God. Amen. In which a point when the word tells us that actually without the Spirit of God we are none of His. It makes us ineffective. It makes us lacking. And it's a gift. It's a promise. It is not what we have to beg for and behave badly for necessarily. For these folk just get a hand laid on them. Don't go and lay hands on everybody in church now. We're getting deep. But somebody need a hand. Somebody every now and then need a hand in on He said, You may have a seat that we recover. What greater healing to be healed and get the Holy Ghost at the same time? 
God is just awesome. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? We don't have to reason. It was a simple question. The man said, this is where we are deficient, but we're going to obey God. And in such a quick time, the Spirit of the Lord was there to fill them. Amen. And God can do for you in an instant what needs to be done. Sometimes we have to undo our learning. Don't get used to living without God. And don't get used to coming to church and not worshiping. But it's the norm to sing and shout. It's the norm to dance before God. It's the norm to shout out in your spirit. You are the quicker who are dead. He made you alive. Look here, before the Holy Ghost was poured out, one dead man that rolled his body into the place of the dead. But it touched one of the elect bones. And the dead came back to life. You tell me there is not power in the Holy Ghost. Amen. You tell me that if the, if the bones of the elect can bring life, how much will the Holy Ghost do? Quicken you. Come on. Total power of God Himself. His divine nature. And I'm telling you, you don't have to figure out what will I do, what will I say. Irrelevant. Have you received that power since you believe? How long have you been believing? Amen. One year, two years, five years, twenty years. How long have you been believing? Yet tonight God wants you to believe as how the scriptures say. Now they were saying of Apollos. He was in the previous chapter. He was an eloquent man. The guy spoke well. Amen. He was learned in the things of God. But something was missing. And Priscilla and Aquila was able to minister to him and to help him know this is that. The Bible said he went off to be of help to the churches. You see, some of us with talents, we just, nobody can tell us. Nobody can touch us. But I love upon us, he was there, an eloquent man, under the anointing of God, with an influencing ministry. We need some of those preachers that will influence, that will convict and help conversion. Churches are going to the people just talking and debating and nothing comes of it. But when the power of God is in your life, the power of the Holy Ghost, then your life is going to be different. We're going to stand at this time. But if you're somebody tonight who needs more from God, something is missing. Been here before and you know, we're not here to prophesy that we're not going to make it. You'll make it through the coming year. What God does is permanent. He won't stop in July. He won't stop in December. It will continue. That's the power of the Holy Ghost in the church to revive the body and to keep us alive. We're going to stand. Is there somebody tonight who feels that Recognize that something is missing. This is why I have the problems I have. Jesus, something special. 